Hi, I'm Dr. Alex Canseco. I'm a mom, a vet, and a creative. And before I became a vet, I was actually an interior architect. And I studied interior architecture at the University of New South Wales in Sydney, Australia. That is where I, where I started my career. I worked for a small architecture practice in Camperdown, Sydney. And then I moved to San Diego, California, where I worked for another architecture firm. And during my career, I worked on many different types of projects, but my primary focus were residential projects. So I've worked on single family residential homes. I've worked on multi-residential developments, hospitality projects, including restaurants and bars, as well as a private airport, a day spa, uh, the boys and girls clubs, and many more. Although I'm no longer in the design industry, I still have a huge passion for design and art, and I think it will stick with me forever. In this video, I will take you through the design steps I took in creating Owen's Nursery, as well as how I organize everything in here. So let's get started. actually hadn't finished the nursery design completely before Owen was born because he came early so I took the opportunity this week to try and put some additional finishing touches on the nursery such as sewing on these pom-pom edges to the curtains, potting the plants that had been sitting around for months waiting to be done, Owen also had a lot of fun helping with that activity and then of course installing the planters. When starting to design any room, I recommend first looking for inspiration. This can include looking through design magazines, books, online, or even a single object can act as a creative trigger that sets the ball rolling and ties together the entire final design scheme. For example, a favorite flower, a classic toy, a piece of fabric, whatever it might be, Use it as a reference to guide all the design choices that you make for that space and you will create a beautiful, cohesive design. When designing Owen's room, I was inspired by this crib that we found at a store called Restoration Hardware in Santa Monica, California. We were there for a short weekend birthday getaway and stumbled across the shop while taking an evening stroll through the main promenade. I'm normally attracted to modern design. However, the design of this crib is actually based on the signature silhouette of a classic 19th century French wing chair. As such, it is a French upholstered wing crib. A bed fit for a little prince, we thought. The original wing chair was designed to protect its occupants from drafts. In turn, this crib is also very protective, with high upholstered sides, soft fabric, and with the warmth of the natural wood, it almost cocoons the baby within it from drafts and strong light. We placed it in a part of the room furthest away from the window to allow for more restful sleep. The remaining room design revolves around this bed. I wanted to keep the colors quite muted to create a calming, restful space. Half of the walls are this gray blue that was drawn from the color of the wood grain, helping to accentuate the beauty of the grain. It's a relatively dark color the other half of the room is painted a lighter color. In this way, it helps to create two distinct spaces in the small room. The lighter color helps to bring more light into the room around the window. If you sit in this part of the room, you really only see the lighter color. And if you face this way, only see this one. You do get some light bouncing off the light walls onto the chair for daytime reading and play. The color around the bed is darker to promote sleep. Just like the bed, the paint is also from Restoration Hardware and is their eco-friendly interior latex paint. It contains no VOCs and as such, it does not off-gas as much air polluting agents as other paints. This is very important, especially for a nursery. As much as aesthetics were important in this design, first and foremost was the health of our baby and all the major items in this room are low emitting. The crib, change table wall unit and recliner a green guard gold certified 
This means that it has been tested and verified to meet stringent chemical emission standards. It has significantly reduced chemical emissions. If you have ever bought new furniture and it has had that new furniture smell, those are usually chemicals that you're smelling. And it's a good idea to air out the room really well for at least a few weeks until the furniture has done off gassing. As such, it's best to have the nursery all set up well in advance of baby's arrival. If you are getting used furniture, this is not normally as much of an issue, but be careful with used cribs specifically, as they may not meet current safety standards. For example, the old drop side cribs are no longer made or sold. It's even illegal in the USA to donate them, but a well-meaning family member or friend may not be aware of this when giving you their old furniture, so you need to be aware of this. In order to keep the room air as fresh as possible, I have also incorporated live plants. It's taken almost one and a half years to get them in here, but finally they're in. And to add a little fun, whimsical touch, we created a gnome garden within them. I plan to change it out every so often. Maybe a different theme for, let's say, Halloween, Christmas, etc. I also have plans to put up a flying cow jumping over the moon. She's in the works. And a sheep mobile above his bed so he can count them as he falls asleep. I have already made two of these felted sheep and have a couple more to make. I will be posting updates on my Instagram page so do check that out if you're interested in how to do this. All the pieces in this room are from different design eras. This wall unit on the right for example is based on turn of the century design. But you can make different pieces work together by making sure that they have some common element, be it colour, shape, etc. In this case, I have used different shades of grey. There are also rounded edges to many of the pieces, be it a circular shape, rounded corners of the bed, also the glider has rounded corners too. The chair has a tweed fabric that has both light and dark fibers to tie in the curtains to the darker pieces of furniture. Floor rug has dark gray with white and bits of yellow once again tying everything together. The side table has diamond shapes to tie in with the rug and although the glider is quite a modern design again it pays homage to the original winged chair that the crib design took inspiration from. So you can see how everything is tying together. The picture frames we searched to find for a very long time and found a couple in one store marshals. They match perfectly with the wood and style of the crib but also bring warmth into the room that otherwise has very cool tones. We had to go to multiple stores around San Diego to find the other matching frames. Together, hung up as a cluster like this, they almost create the illusion of one larger piece of artwork which creates a much more dramatic and impactful effect, drawing the eye to it. Also important to hang artwork at an appropriate height for the scale of the piece itself, as well as the scale of the room. Ideally eye level so that it can be viewed and appreciated. Ideally also have it line up with something in the room, for example, the bed height or the windowsill, etc. or center it on the wall. The animals chosen had different shades of gray tones to fit the muted palette of the soft furnishings but two had a slightly different color to add interest. I used these colors, for example the yellow, to add other subtle points of interest or accents in the room. For example, this blanket was linked back to the color of the duckling in the frame. As you can see, everything is working together somehow. There was a lot of thought that went into all the items selected in this room. The light curtains around the bed are nicely contrasted by the darker surrounding gray-blue walls like a stormy evening sky. They cascade around the bed like soft white clouds. I chose the lighter curtains around the window to keep with the lighter walls and help to reflect light, but gave them a gray pom-pom border to tie back in with the gray furnishings. I wanted to create a muted palette like this to also act as a backdrop for some of the whimsical, more colorful elements that I will be adding in over time, such as the cow I spoke of, the mobile, the gnome garden, the wall art, etc. This will help to draw the eye to these elements and create interest in the room. 
In order to control light in the room, we have these wonderful blockout curtains. You can see it has nice thick fabric and um, it really is good at keeping the light out. Really helpful for naps and bedtime. We also have an adjustable light fixture and it's great as it can be adjusted to focus on different parts of the room such as the artwork and the glider when reading a book in the evening. The moonlight adds some sparkle and a fun element for Owen. We also have LED color changing lights behind the change table to create different moods and promote sleep and relaxation. Overall, this room does need more light. However, I plan on adding this in the form of recessed overhead lighting. No more need for any focal elements. And to finish off this video, I'm going to take you through some of the organization methods that I use in Owen's room as well as some of the safety features. I love this wall unit for so many reasons. For example, you can attach the change mat to it, to the back of it. I guess you can do that with any wall unit uh, to prevent baby from falling on the ground. Uh, but also with the wall unit, it has plenty of shelving space. And I've used the two bottom shelves for baskets where I keep his toys. Um, we have the rest of the shelves mainly for his books. On the side I have put some hooks so that we can hang his towels up to dry and it's out of sight. In the other basket on the lower shelf, I have all his changing supplies and they're nice close right at hand uh, for when we do a nappy change. We've got some Q-tips, uh, we've got his diaper cream, some cotton balls, coconut oil, we've got his wipes, some little uh, washcloths down there, as well as his body lotion, and I also have some sunscreen for him. In case we're going out in the sun in the morning, then I will lather him up right away before we leave. And then a bag of bits and bobs, just so they're not laying there loosely on the bottom of the basket, nice and tucked away. But out of, also out of sight, on the side of the wall unit, we have Owen's diaper pail, nice and hidden. As you can see, the towels too, so when you walk into the room, you don't actually see those items at all. The other reason why I love this thing is because of all the storage it provides. And so I have multiple drawers and shelves here. I keep Owen's cloth diapers in the top drawer. I have everything organized in little baskets, especially for those little items that really helps uh, to keep things well sorted. His little accessories up here, his socks, his bibs, his singlet tops, his diapers, right there at hand when I need to change him. In the lower drawers, I also have everything organized in baskets. That way I can separate the clothes out into different categories. Makes it a lot easier when getting ready. So I have pants, I have long sleeve tops, I have pajamas. And I just love the whole idea of rolling things up. That's his uh, dirty laundry basket there on the right. But rolling things up really helps to keep things organized. I can't recommend it enough. It allows you to easily visualize and reach for each individual piece of clothing. It's a little bit harder rolling bulkier items like these blankets that I have in the lower drawer, so I don't do that. And just fold those items as per usual. Owen also has a little walk-in closet where I can hang his clothes. Below it I have placed a few shelves so that I can fold different items based on their sizes and organize things that way. On the lower shelves I have things he's grown out of, I actually have to put that in storage. The mattress is comprised of 10% food grade polymer and 90% air, so it's highly breathable. It's also nice and firm and comes with removable, washable liners that are also breathable. And I like the Aiden and Nai muslin bedding. Once again, very breathable and actually recommended by this mattress company for use with its mattresses. 
We also have this bed skirt. I think it's really important to have in this particular bed design because of the spring base. It helps to hide that. And finally, for another little whimsical touch, here's Rocking Dragon. And so we've come to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, please click the like button. Please subscribe. If you want notifications as to when my next videos are coming up, please do press the bell button. Stay tuned for next week's video. Uh, it is the monthly San Diego with Kids segment and we are going to SeaWorld San Diego. I post one video every Thursday at 8.30. So we'll see you then. Bye.